Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Michigan here with another replay for you. And this time I'm featuring a Class X Advanced here on steps against the Brinks clan. Now, we had already defended on our land. We lost the first battle. So, we are attacking the enemy for the first time this advance. Now, as we're getting to our positions, I'm going to let you know what our initial call was. If we use the free camera mode here, you'll see that we're sending Flotag 1 Chieftain off to the right down the zero. We've got one medium in the middle, and Grave Slave, a little bit of miscommunication there, but he's on his way over now. Everybody else is going to come to this corner. Version 4s are going to hang out there. Unfortunately, Grudge, consider there a little bit of miscommunication as well. It's all right. Could be a lot worse. So let's look at the enemy lineup here. They're bringing mostly a gun depression vehicles. You can consider the VZ and the 5A STBs, gun depression, and they've got some generic fast heavy. So it could be one of two things. It could be sort of a bait. If you've watched my video on the different types of camps and how to break a camp, it could be a full push or it could be a breakout. Now, just from our fantastic spotting there from the EBR, we note that this may be a breakout because they're camping. So you can see right now we're pushing the version boards over the top. We're going to go back into the fixed camera. I'm going to pause it real quick before I the game gets ahead of the commentary here. In this scenario, you like to push all the I like to push all the tanks with no gun depression down low side because this whole area down here, if you're following the middle of my mouse cursor here, this is all flat. However, what they don't have is any sort of ability to flex down the right here and gain a better angle. Again, if you've seen some of my concept videos, we need to gain those angles so that the enemy's guns are pointed in way or more directions than ours. Let's put it that way. So what we're going to do to compensate for that is we're going to, it's a slight gamble, but we're going to push across the top. Now, sometimes you can get shot from in here. However, with the way the enemies are deployed behind those tracks, it seems fairly safe. And that's exemplified by the fact that the EBR isn't getting shot at or spotting anything along this bridge. Let's keep it going. I should mention one more thing. The version 4s are just going to kind of come and try and come into this area, clear anything out which clears a path for the heavies to push low into that bowl. However, this is not going to go as expected. And actually, we are going to fall into a trap that we so often set for enemy teams. So at this point, the Chieftain and the 140 are free to move up. There's that whole group again. And now, this is the first alarm bell. That STB-1, and it doesn't occur to me at the time. You'll see in a second. Only that STB-1 shouldn't be lit there. Being shot by a Chieftain. Bouncing it. Alright, and pause. Still, now we have a 279 back there. That should be in a second alarm. However, the vehicles are so far up that I don't... I believe that they're actually further than they really are. And there's the Inspire from Noisy Cricket. And there we go. This is a trap that you never, ever want to fall into on this map. Now, how does the trap work? They set tanks down there in Delta-1, as you can see, this whole mass. What that does is it draws all the tanks in. If they try and push past it, they're going to get shot in the back. If they try and kill this stuff, they're going to get shot in the side by all of the gun depression tanks sitting behind the ridge. The enemy tank, enemy team has a little bit of an odd ratio here. They should have about, the way we run it, is we have about half the vehicles in here because you don't want to commit so much stuff into that bowl that your tanks over the top can't really get shots. If you're able to line this whole ridge line, everybody's going to be able to fire down into the dip. However, in this scenario, their tanks are going to kind of get each other's way. Now you can see we immediately lose our first vehicle. I'm going to drop Artie on that group right there, just trying to soften them up. So, what is the call now? Because this group down here, you can see Omni and Malto are no longer pushing that. This group down low is going to die. There is almost... No chance, maybe 1 in 50 games where they actually manage to pull that off. They're going to die, so their goal right now is to get as much damage and as much kills or as many kills as possible so that we don't have to deal with them. These two IS-7s just have to hold, and the Chieftains, we need to do the best we possibly can. It's going to come through just penning our shots, softening these tanks up, and just hitting anything we possibly can. We're going to go into my boat here. But we're going to start taking advantage of this situation here, of these chieftains who are continuously poking. You can see the IS-7s did end up pushing in. Unfortunate there. Let's keep this going. You can see heavies there are 
trying to push out. It's not going very well. They're getting shot in the side. We're only down 1700 HP, however, that's about to change pretty rapidly. Enemy drops their already strike. Not a great result there. We're down to 3600, 4500, 5000, and now we are down three kills as well. But those 277s, those heavies are all about to die. Look, the chieftains in the mid are doing the best we possibly can to do damage to those tanks over the top. Unfortunately, it's not really enough. We're able to get some in there, but now we're down 5,500 HP. And down 5 kills, momentarily down 5 kills again. So, now we have one hell of a situation to deal with. We were down 5,600 HP at the high point of this, or the low point, you could say. And now we're down 4 kills as well. So, what do the enemy need to do to win? One, they're on defense, so they need to not poke at all, don't try and damage our tanks, and wait for us to try and close the distance. They have the numerical advantage, they also have the hit point advantage. Let's see what they decide to do and how we're able to take advantage of that. All they really need to do is just reset right now. You can see their slow tag, and the chieftain, and Tom and the 140 are doing a pretty good job of starting to nail down those chieftains. Because of all of the chieftains on this ridge line here, we're preventing the enemies from working in these gaps where they could potentially crossfire flow tag, which means he's pretty much safe there to work that sort of ridge line. But keep it going. The mistake there by the SKB-1, he was low health, he did not need to poke up, and same with this chieftain. Fortunately, I whiff a shot there. Because I'm playing on an account with not many credits, I can't afford the premium consumer right now. It's something that I'm working on here if you're taking note. Because this is not my main account. It is Mitch Spartan, not Michigan Spartan. Poking up there, a little bit dangerous. Getting shots in. I'm really trying to be wary of these E100s on the left. The last thing I want is to get shot with 750 health. So now I'm going to try and use these last chunk of premium rounds that I have work on this E100. You can see I'm using the auto lock to maintain my my aim on him and then I can easily swap back, remove the auto lock, and refocus on his cheeks. Oh, we're still down 4 tanks. We're down 4300 HP. 42 is fluctuating. I am just not getting through the turret of that E100 quite frustrating at the time because I've missed a lot of shots already. I've actually only connected four shots for all 16 of the ones that I've fired. 279 is continuing to poke. They were down 5,000 hit points again. Not going to take that shot. I've got one premium round left and I'm going to save it, hopefully, or I'm going to just dump it against this 279. That's not going to go through. Okay, but let's pause again. Because we're still basically in the same situation we started. We lost the 140, we got the Chieftain on the right, so this is actually starting to go south. Because if we lose that Chieftain, and then the EBR, they're going to be able to push out and pretty much eliminate our ability to shoot in that direction or even move out of that. So, the enemies you can see are pushing out. So, what we're going to start doing is just letting them continue to make mistakes. We're going to work this ridge line and see what angles we can get. The worst thing we could do right now is try and push in. We need the enemies to make a mistake. Most games are lost, not won. So, we're going to allow them to lose the game if they want to lose it. Let's say we're going to hear. So, you can see I'm rotating out to the right. What I'm trying to do is stretch the field, and I always say this. We did this again. This is why the Chieftains pushed around here. It's to stretch the field. Force the enemies to have to fire in several different directions, or try and take an overmatch. So by moving out along this ridge as far as I can, I'm able to cut off this area from them. There we go, finally I pen my fifth shot of the game. Now I'm going to try and work on this 277. I'm going to make some pretty bad plays here. I'm not even using my gun depression or my, my hull armor here. Which is a very unfortunate thing that I'm doing. This is not a great example for what you should be doing on this ridge line. If I just backed up, moved about 10 meters to my left, I wouldn't have this issue. So 277 again. I'm going to get lucky for the second time. And 
Now I'm asking, this 277 has over 10, so I'm asking the team, we're only down 1100 HP, but we're still down 3 tanks. So all of our hit points are in these chieftains. We've actually lost the EBR, I believe he got lit. But, they have managed to clear out a bunch of these chieftains, or they've rotated out. So I'm asking, can I get some help? And we're going to try and pinch this 277 here. Wait for that. I'm waiting for that E100 attempt to come back. Unfair Gillian gameplay gets a great shot through the tracks there, finishing off that last chieftain. And now you can see that he's going to rotate around to the left, and we're going to try and pinch this 277. Now, I don't want to be taking the frontal assault. I have got worse armor and less health, though I have a little bit higher DPM, so I need to be the flanker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in this way. And we're going to kind of pinch him like a crab claw, if you want to imagine that, kind of going around a rock. So he's going to draw the 277's attention, and I'm going to try and shoot him in the side. It's a little bit dodgy. I might still get shot here. We know we're going to kill this vehicle. So I'm going to get lit. Just try and push past. 277 is actually waiting for me. He's going to put a hit. Luckily, it's a low roll. And as that 277 is backing up, all the other chieftains on the ridge line are able to support. Now what I can do is use this ridge line right up here in front of me on my left to start to work down some of these vehicles. I'm going to push up. I got to be really careful there because of those low tanks. Or those tanks in the ditch there. Decided not to push out. And Babe Slave is over there is going to finish off that E100. And you can see, let's pause it again. So now we're actually in a favorable position because we've encircled the entire enemy team in this one area. That 279 is still going to be a problem. Flow tag over there is a one shot. Though we do have Lord Thomas who's going to come over there as well. Let's see what happens. Unfair Gleam play is going to press him down into the low side. Unfortunately, he gets himself a little, a little bit of a tough situation there because of the 270. And that 279 is going to finish off low tag. If you're in a situation where you're a one shot, you're always going to want to wait until a tank with more health, or at least can, a tank that can hit or take a hit from the enemy vehicle you're facing, comes in there. A tiny bit of missed timing there. If he had waited just a couple of seconds, LT could have gotten the shot, and then flow tag could have pushed over and potentially damaged that 279. So LT is going to get a good shot in there. Unfortunately, that 279 is still a two shot for him. He's going to take another shot, and now I'm rotating over. I want to ensure that we're able to take this vehicle out. Well, zooming out there, just kind of eyeing that situation. Now, at this point, I tell we're down hit points again after we lost two shots from LT and from Flotag. So I'm telling everybody, stand down, don't move, just sit there. Because, again, they're still overmatched. 3-2 to two over there, I believe. Because we have a 2-on-1. One, one. So, they have to hold while we take our overmatch. And then we can have a full overmatch. We can clear out the rest of those vehicles. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to poke up. Chieftain takes another shot. And I'm going to finish off that 279. Now we've got them encircled. The enemy are in a very difficult spot. They have to break out of this position. Otherwise... We're going to get on this ridge line and clean them up. Also, we don't have a lot of time on our side, so I'm going to call Rage over there, or Rage's killer beast, we call him Rage, get on the cap, and then they say, you know what, no, 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 we don't need to, and then I call him back again, because being knowledgeable as a caller of how long it takes to cap with one, two, and three vehicles is super important. With one vehicle, it's one minute and 43 seconds, with two vehicles, it's 45 seconds, and with three vehicles, it's 25 seconds. So I know that if he gets on that cap circle within eight seconds, that he will be able to cap this out fully if we are not able to kill these vehicles here. It's a good safety precaution. 50, 49, 48, and he's on cap. So now we're just going to start doing it. So here's what I'm doing right now. If you notice where I'm sitting, I'm using this rock to block me from all these other three heavies, and then I'm going to start killing this E100. It is not technically fire because I believe at the time, the other vehicle is on higher HP. However, it's just about getting that damage and keeping myself alive right now. I'm trying to go straight through that upper hull, and now the enemies are, or have begun to realize they're going to push out. Now, here's a different idea of when you shouldn't focus fire. 
The enemies cannot break out to reset the cap. That's our safety. So what I'm going to do is instead of focusing the rear tank, I'm going to focus the front tank because that is what these two chieftains, Unfair Gameplay and Graveslave, are going to be able to hit first. I don't want them to die. We can deal with the I-7 as he comes to the front. Looks like they're going to get shots into him. Trying to get a shot into the drive wheel there to stop that five. Again, you might say, well, you know, you guys are going to win it anyway, but it's all about practice and just applying every situation or every possible advantage you can gain as quickly as possible or in every scenario that you run in. One more that U100 is looking for that reset, taking a stab at this IS. And there we go. We're going to finish off the enemy team there. 15 to 10, overcoming a 5 tank and 5500 HP deficit. Again, the enemies lost this game for themselves, and that's crucial, especially when you're on defense. If you're in my advances a lot, when we're on defense, I'm always telling people, stand down, set up your lane of fire, and don't deviate from it. The enemies decided to come out of their area and try and press the advantage when they weren't up or they weren't guaranteed the win yet. It wasn't 13 to 2, right? Or even, you know, 10 to 3. We, they were down, they were up 5 vehicles and 5,000 hit points, and that's not enough to warrant pushing out like they did. So, at the same time, we had to execute properly, not bleed health, which we didn't. We played patient on the ridgeline, and we allowed them to lose the game rather than forcing us to push in and probably wipe us out if we had to do so. Let's take a look at the post-game stats and see how we did as a team. All right, post-game. So, we're going to finish off with a fairly even distribution of damage. Obviously, the tanks that pushed in first, pretty much all of these vehicles, minus the EBR, pushed in first, got annihilated. And that's why you can't take post-game results at face value, because who sent them in there to their death? I did, because I didn't take into account that they might be doing the same sort of trap that we do to enemy teams. EBR, obviously, is going to be ineffective, because they're camping. What's an EBR going to do? Same with the 140. Can't really poke with that thing. He was in a position with the s -conk, and unfortunately it just wasn't working out. So the Chieftains and the s -conk, myself, we kind of had to mop up the rest of this mess. However, we were able to pull it out through a little bit of luck and a little bit of skill. So no premium account here. I'm going to spend 77000 on ammunition. Still going to make 4.4k. Obviously battle payments come in clutch every single time. Getting a decent amount of XP, 3,000, but it's not really about the post game. It's about the victory screen right here. So I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you learned something from it. Maybe it didn't. Maybe it was entertaining. Maybe it wasn't. But let me know if you got any questions. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.